You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on Real Magic. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on Real Magic, Creating Miracles in Everyday Life by Dr. Wayne D. Dyer. We'll start with a quote. Quote, this book was written with the express purpose of showing you the way to create what you may have previously thought to be impossible in your life. End quote. That's Wayne Dyer from Real Magic. Wayne Dyer rocks, and creating this note was a lot of fun. If you could see what my copy of the book looks like, you'd know why. Nearly every page is underlined and starred and marked all up. It's really one big, big idea. If Wayne Dyer resonates with you, I think you'll dig the book as well as The Power of Intention and Manifest Your Destiny. I've done notes on both of those books as well. For now, let's get into some big ideas on how to create real magic in our lives. First big idea is enlightenment through purpose. Quote, everything in the universe has a purpose. Indeed, the invisible intelligence that flows through everything in a purposeful fashion is also flowing through you. End quote. Reminds me of Marcus Aurelius' great thought, everything, a horse, a vine, is created for some duty. For what task, then, were you yourself created? A man's true delight is to do the things he was made for. End quote. A key aspect of Dyer's real magic formula is to live a life of purpose, where we're less focused on outcomes and more focused on living with integrity to our highest purpose. The book is all about getting in touch with that purpose and rocking it from there. Dyer also says this, quote, Getting on purpose in life by going within and discovering that purpose is about loving unconditionally and serving and making contact with what is there about us always alters one's worldview dramatically, end quote. It's funny because in my philosopher's note on Aurelius's meditations, the big idea after the quote I just shared above by Aurelius is... Let your one delight and refreshment be to pass from one service to the community to another, with God ever in mind. I love it when two of my favorite teachers are in such accordance. They must be tapping into something bigger, huh? So purpose and service, purpose and service, purpose and service. And while we're on the subject, gotta throw in Martin Seligman's research on the science of happiness, huh? In his great book, Authentic Happiness, you can see the notes on that. Seligman tells us that we'll be happy to the extent we use our strengths often. If we want a truly meaningful life, we've got to use our strengths in the greatest service to the world. Again, purpose and service, purpose and service, purpose and service. Begs the questions, what's your purpose and how can you serve? There's a bit more purpose mojo from Dyer. He says, quote, when you go beyond outcome in life, you find yourself unconcerned about what is in it for you. Thoughts, feelings, and behavior focus more and more on the fulfillment of your purpose. You go beyond success, achievement, and performance as indications of your life's mission. Instead, every moment is lived fully and lovingly. Material possessions cease to dominate your thoughts, which is not to say that they disappear. They simply cease to be the focus of life. Instead, your purpose takes hold and you gain a sense of joy and inner harmony, knowing that you are divinely fulfilling your reason for being here. As Montaigne put it so succinctly, the great and glorious masterpiece of man is how to live with purpose. End quote. The next big idea is seven beliefs for manifesting real magic. Wayne loves lists, and I dig his lists. This book, like most of his, is packed with a bunch of them. Here's one on the seven beliefs for manifesting real magic. Number one, there is an invisible but knowable life force within you. Number two, your thoughts are something that you can control and they originate within you. Number three, there are no limits. Number four, your life has a purpose. Number five, you overcome weaknesses by leaving them behind. Number six, when you examine what you believe to be impossible, you can then change your beliefs. Number seven, you can go beyond logic. How about a quick look at number three? There are no limits. Dyer says, all of the things that you have become convinced are limits are products of the way in which you have learned to think. 
Before the invention of the microscope, most people did not believe in the existence of microscopic life. People who believe only what they can see or prove scientifically are limited by the current level of sophistication of our measuring devices. End quote. That's cool. Think about it. Before we could measure microscopic stuff, they didn't exist in most people's minds. Does that mean they weren't really there or just that most people's vision was too narrow? Did you know that when Marconi, the guy who invented the radio, told his friends he could harness invisible waves and transmit sound from one place to another with nothing, nothing we can see anyway, between them, his friends thought he was nuts and threw him in an insane asylum. No joke. The big idea? Don't limit yourself by what you can currently see. Real magic starts when we see no limits. Sound a little wacky? Good. If your imagination isn't big enough to see that big, work on your imagination. Speaking of working on our imaginations, what in your life right now are you demonstrating limited thinking on? Is it your creative potential, your business potential, your relationships, your kids, your spirituality, your financial abundance? How can you expand the limits on that a little or maybe a lot more today? The next big idea, acting as if. Quote, the fact is, for myself, I know that if I believe strongly enough and have enough confidence in myself to learn what I need, then there are very few things that I could not accomplish in a rather short period of time. Once you know you can do it and act that way, the means will be obvious. Acting as if you were what you want to become and know you can become is the way to remove self-doubt and enter your real magic kingdom. End quote. Ah, uh, acting as if. I love the way Wayne describes this. Here's a little more mojo from The Good Doctor, then we'll chat about it. He says this, quote, You have that spirit of God flowing within you at all times, and you will discover a simple secret. Anything you desire to do, you can do. Anything. The key is desire, which is an invisible, dimensionless concept that resides within you. If you truly desire it and can picture it for yourself, you can manifest it. The way to this truth for me has been to act as if that which I desired within myself were already here in the material world, end quote. All right, so what is it that you want to see manifested in your life? Being more spiritually enlightened, more successful in your professional and or creative pursuits, being a better partner in your intimate relationships, a better parent, being in optimal physical health, vitality. Cool, let's pick one. Get the image of your ideal. Imagine it up on a pedestal, like in a museum. You got it? Can you see that ideal version of you? Good. Now, how would that version of you act now? Imagine that. What would they do? How would they walk? How would they talk, breathe, smile, laugh, sit, stand, eat, all that? Got it? Now, act like that now. Seriously, try this out. It's amazing. When you feel yourself contracting into the old stress and fear patterns, conjure up the image of your ideal self in whatever domain of your life. How about your body? See how the ideal physical specimen that is you would act even when the current you doesn't want to go out and exercise. The ideal you doesn't even consider not going. So act as if you were that ideal now. Your parenting? See how the ideal parent version of you would respond to a challenge with one of your kids and act like that ideal now. Your relationship, same thing. Your professional, entrepreneurial, creative genius, same thing. Acting as if. It's really magical. Try it out. All right, the next big idea is rejoice in the prosperity of others. Quote, rejoice in the prosperity of others. When you feel contemptuous or even a twinge of jealousy toward the accomplishments or lifestyles of others, you are harboring negativity where love must reside. You cannot attract prosperity to yourself if you are filled with rancor, judgment, anger, jealousy, hatred, fear, tension, or the like. This kind of negative inner mindset keeps you from being on purpose. You cannot be fulfilled and envious at the same time. End quote. That's from a chapter on real magic and prosperity. Great stuff. I could write five notes on that chapter alone. Seriously. What do you do when you see others who are doing great things in their lives and or enjoying great material success? 
you celebrate their success or feel a twinge of jealousy or even outright envy. Pay attention. A really good way to cut yourself off from your source and your friends is to swim in negativity like that. Don't ever allow the negative thoughts to fester. Choose to celebrate their success. It reminds me of T. Harv Eker in his great book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. You can see the notes. He says, bless that which you want. If you see a person with a beautiful home, bless that person and bless that home. If you see a person with a beautiful car, bless that person and bless that car. If you see a person with a loving family, bless that person and bless that family. If you see a person with a beautiful body, bless that person and bless their body. There you go. Rejoice in the prosperity of others. The next big idea, how can you serve others? Quote, when you are able to shift your inner awareness to how you can serve others, and when you make this the central focus of your life, you will then be in a position to know true miracles in your progress toward prosperity. End quote. How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I serve? Imagine that as the central focus of our lives. How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I serve? Another way to frame it is to ask, how can I share my gifts and love and enthusiasm and overall fabulous highest self with the world more today? That's a good one for your journal, by the way. Let's rock it. In the PDF, I have a section where you can write down five things, and I suggest here are five ways I'm going to share more of my highest self with the world today. Number one, way that I'm going to share more of my highest self Number two, number three, number four, number five. What are five ways you can share more of your highest self with the world today? Think about that. How can you serve others more and more? Next big idea, how do you surrender? Just let go. Quote, how do you surrender? Just let go. Don't strain to achieve. Instead, enjoy the process of the work that you are doing. The results will come independent of your striving for them. When your mind is on the result, rather than what you are doing, you create inner discord that blocks any and all possibilities for miracles to show up. Prosperity is about process, not outcome. Purpose is about loving and giving. End quote. I love that. A couple of things. First, do you know where the word prosperity comes from? In his transformative book, Spiritual Economics, you can see the notes, Eric Butterworth teaches us that, quote, prosperity comes from the Latin root which literally translates according to hope or to go forward hopefully. Thus, it is not so much a condition in life as it is an attitude toward life. The truly prosperous person is what psychologist Rollo May calls the fully functioning person. End quote. Awesome. So to be prosperous is to go forward hopefully. And I dig the idea that we need to get our minds off the result and into the moment. Russell Simmons says this in his classic book, Do You? Of course, you can see the notes on that as well. He says, I know some people say keep your eyes on the prize, but I disagree. When your eyes are stuck on the prize, you're going to keep stumbling and crashing into things. If you really want to get ahead, you've got to keep your eyes focused on the path, end quote. It's all about the journey, folks, stating the obvious. And that journey is all about loving and giving our highest selves in joy moment to moment to moment. So how can you surrender, relax, let go a little more today and trust the whole process as you love, give, love, give, and love and give some more? While you're doing that, how about this big idea from George Leonard's great book, Mastery? He says, quote, for a master, the rewards gained along the way are fine, but they are not the main reason for the journey. Ultimately, the master and the master's path are one. And if the traveler is fortunate, that is, if the path is complex and profound enough, the destination is two miles farther away for every mile he or she travels, end quote. Imagine that, loving the journey so much that we hope the destination is two miles further away for every one mile we travel. All right, the next big idea, disdain all disbelief. Quote, disdain all disbelief. Work out a system within your mind that allows you to imagine yourself living a prosperous life with all the material things that are necessary. Send scarcity out of your mind and refuse to have those kinds of thoughts. When an old habitual scarcity thought begins to enter your consciousness, simply say, next, end quote. 
I love that. So the next time you see a negative thought of scarcity or whatever start floating across the screen of your mind, notice it and have fun smiling and saying, next, make it a game. Next, next, next. Let your mind know the old patterns of thought aren't the new you and that you're playfully serious about rewiring your brain so the old habituated channels die off as your new ones are created. While we're on the subject of nexting disbelief, let's take a peek at a few other negative thoughts to get out of our beautiful consciousness. I've got a rewiring practice these days where I'm becoming more and more aware of a bunch of negative thought patterns I have and systematically removing nexting them out. No more criticizing, complaining, blaming, gossiping, or comparing for me. Every morning, I journal my list of no's and notice when they start to creep into my head or a conversation, and then I politely escort them out. No more criticizing, complaining, blaming, gossiping, or comparing. Highly recommend the practice. Next big idea, commit your ideal to paper. Quote, commit to paper precisely what you would like to have appear in your physical life. By seeing it and reading it repeatedly, you will plant that thought more firmly in your mind and you will begin to manifest that which you are imagining. End quote. You have a journal? Please say yes. If so, are you using it? Sweet. If you don't have a journal yet, please stop everything you're doing and go get one. All right, well, maybe it's not quite that urgent, but uh, pretty please, go get one. Journaling is such an amazing way to slow down our thoughts, focus our energy and attention and intentions. I journal for at least a few minutes, usually a lot more than that, every day. It's one of the key practices during my rewiring sabbatical, and I highly recommend it. If you'd like, you can check out my YouTube video on it called Journaling and Green Rice Patties. There's a link in the PDF directly to it, or you can go to Facebook and uh, find me, Philosopher's Notes, Brian Johnson, and it's in my video section. Anyway, there's a link in the PDF you can check out. So as Dyer says, quote, commit to paper precisely what you would like to have appear in your physical life. By seeing it and reading it repeatedly, you will plant that thought more firmly in your mind and you will begin to manifest that which you are imaging, end quote. Note, don't use your journal to lament all the things that are wrong in your life. That's just going to groove those patterns of thought more. Instead, if you're feeling stressed, challenged, annoyed, etc., try an Abraham Hicks pivot process. You can see my notes on money and the law of attraction, ask and it is given, and the amazing power of deliberate intent for more. Um, but try one of their processes. Their one called the pivot process is cool. They have you say and write down, okay, I don't want that, whatever it is that's stressing you out. What do I want? And then journal about the visions of your ideal. It's a really cool way to Aikido the negativity into a positive, powerful stuff. All right, the next big idea and final big idea, intention inventory. Quote, create an intention inventory for yourself. Not a wish list, but an inventory of what you intend to create within yourself. The kind of person you want to become along with the necessary ingredients for creating that person. You must first know this. Then shift to your intention stance. Quote, I intend to manifest the necessary talent and intellect to become the kind of purposeful person I am destined to be. This kind of inner commitment to your own excellence is the stuff of which miracles are made. End quote. So, what's on that magical intention list in your new journal, my friend? Let's envision our highest selves, commit to living on purpose, and create real magic in the world as we honor the precious gift that is our life. That is the note. I will now share a bit about Wayne, some other notes I think you'll enjoy, and some great quotes from the sidebar. The author of Real Magic, Dr. Wayne D. Dyer, is an internationally renowned author and speaker in the field of self-development. He's the author of 30 books, has created many audio programs and videos, and has appeared on thousands of television and radio shows. Check out drwaynedyer.com for more on Wayne. And if you enjoyed this note, I think you'll also enjoy the note on the power of intention, ask and it is given, money and the law of attraction, Ralph Waldo Emerson, creative mind and success, and the magic of thinking big. And now for some quotes. These are from Dyer. He says, The spiritual being sees the physical world as an arena for growth and learning with the specific purpose of serving and evolving into the higher levels of love. Stop using sentences in your material world 
that reflect what it is you do not want to be. Your intellect, levels of confidence, talents, fears, habits, all are physical world manifestations of a mental equivalent. The way to change those mental equivalents is by thinking quietly, constantly, and persistently of the kind of person you truly want to become. Your biggest hurdle to reshaping your personality into the work of art that you desire will be overcoming your fears and doubts. You have a divine personality. Let it come out and stop judging it. If you want to experience prosperity at a miraculous level, you must leave behind your old ways of thinking and develop a new way of imagining what is possible for you to experience in your life. When I gave up the pursuit of money, more of it flowed into my life than I had ever known before. Why? Because I was living my purpose and surrendering to the universe to provide for my needs. You must begin with a belief and then act as if that which you believe or visualize were already your reality. Begin to act in your physical world as if that person whom you would love to be were already here. I know that I can do anything that I make up my mind to do. Become detached from the outcome of your actions and paradoxically, your level of performance will climb. Here's a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. The ancestor to every action is a thought. St. Francis of Assisi says, I have been all things unholy. If God can work through me, he can work through anyone. And finally, Wayne says, Every successful, truly happy person that I have encountered has confirmed their knowing that there are simply no accidents. So there you go. A quick look at Real Magic, a handful of my favorite big ideas from this great book, Creating Miracles in Everyday Life by Wayne Dyer. Hope you enjoyed. Here's to creating real magic in our lives today, tomorrow, this week, month, year, decade, lifetime. Have an awesome day. See ya. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.